A-frames have a very nice quality that allow you to kind of net down what you're going to pitch to your audience, or you can broaden it to pretty much any extent that you want simply by filling out the four mind maps that compose the initial step in developing A-frames. If you were to be at a train crossing, uh, you would maybe think of stop, look, and listen. Well, with A-frames, it's a little bit different in that you need to change that to stop, listen, and look. First of all, you want to stop and listen to exactly what it is you want to put into these four categories to present to your listeners. Then you want to look inside yourself and see where you can transition those words into a flow of ideas in preparation for making a presentation. Well, A-frames are much like uh, an amalgam. It's, it's a group of ideas put together to solve a problem. And if it were a tooth, the way and you had a cavity in it, the way you would approach that would be the very first thing is you would go in and take out all of the decay, and then you would fill the hole in the tooth. Well, your presentation is pretty much done. All the ideas are there. It's how do you create an environment in which it's easy to present, where you can be you. And there's a lot of people out there, a lot of ideas out there, in terms of how to go about doing that. If you were to go to Dale Carnegie, there would be three steps. Incident, action, benefit. I had an incident that occurred to me. This is the action I took. And if you do the same, you'll have the same benefit. Okay. You have the Army approach, three elements. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. Okay. Simple formula. Okay. You could go to the Phoenix School of Public Speaking. I believe that's right. And it goes, what, so what, now what? Clever. Okay. The what is very much like our Alfie. Okay. What's it all about? So what is the angle? So what? That's really what it is. And now what would be the action step? What do you expect your audience to do as a result of your presentation? Well, there's something missing. The problem here. What's missing is your accountability to the audience. Where is it in any of those presentations and in many others that there is a specific area where you work on telling the audience why they should listen to you? I think it's important. So that's our step. The answer step right here. But there's more. You need a means to memorize things, a really concrete way of remembering things. Well, there is a memory technique that's used by many memory experts called stacking. And in the stacking technique, you take your main idea, and what you do is you stack ideas on top of one another, sticking one to the other. And the ideas are not words, they're pictures. Very similar to what we've done here, except ours are linear. They're not stacked. And there's a number of other differences. If you were to look at experts about problem solving, I, I would think of someone like uh, Einstein his approach to solving problems uh, 
he said something to the extent, make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. When it comes to solutions, great formula. As simple as possible, but no simpler. This approach has got all of the elements that we need, but it's got more. What about having fun? Have, I don't care if you're doing math. I don't care what you're presenting, if you a new gadget. What's the difference? Why can't it be fun creating your presentation? How about your creative urges? I'm an inventor. I love to invent things. I, when I'm inventing, I spend the night in between dreams, figuring out how to do things. How about you? What about your creative urges to do something for yourself? This whole thing here is like a Rorschach test, okay? You do the test, they give you an ink blot, you look at the ink blot, could be like clouds in the sky, and you, only you, determine what's in that input. No one else. No one else would know what you mean if you were doing an inkpot analysis with a psychologist or psychiatrist. They would know what your interpretation was and on that basis make formulate a decision about how you think about things. It's the same without doing an improv, okay? If I had my, my grandson, Jason, and I said to Jason, Jason, uh, draw a tiger, I'll draw a line. And so Jason goes to work and he draws the cat and he puts the lines on and the whiskers and the tail and everything and he gets all done. He says, okay, Papa, you draw a lion. And I go like that. Well, of course he gets mad. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? He did all the work to make a tiger, and all I did was draw a line, but that's what I said I would do. So someone else comes along, and they look at that line, and they say, what's that? Well, it doesn't mean anything to anyone but you. I could look at that line and say, mm, it is a great big purple lion, with uh, four heads, alligator tail, spitting fire. Makes no difference, okay? Makes no difference. What you create here are your ideas. And because they're your ideas, they become a flow of ideas in your mind. So how about you? Where are you with all this? Well, a couple of parents have their son or daughter go off to college <clears throat> and they wait anxiously for the first letter. And they get the first letter and then it is, uh, grades are not so good, uh, drinking parties, uh, out driving, all over the place, uh, missing classes. And you go, oh Lord, what a problem. But there's one line near the end. And that line gives you a little bit of help in terms of accepting what the letter says. It says, dear mom and dad, I'm almost done. Well, you're almost done. But what I need to do is to spend just a little bit of time having you go inside my mind and create with you what's really going on here. Because it's incredibly important that you understand why this is so, so powerful. Powerful. 
Let's go. I already told you it's a Tesla, Tesla wheel. It's a Plaid S car. And that wheel is banging up against this fabulous foundation for your dream home. But that foundation isn't what I told you in the first place. That foundation is made of different sized Lego blocks, all different colors. And these pieces of concrete, not, they're pieces of Legos that are being thrown all over the place. But you're going to love the house with the Lego foundation. And, and this pipe, the pipe is huge. It's huge. And it's vibrating. And it smells. And it's foaming and smoking. And it's pumping out these words. And I don't know what the words are. The words are gibberish. Absolute gibberish. But there's words and it keeps coming out. And this farmer, I mean, the hat's too small. Okay, he's got the bees buzzing around him. He, he's, he's showing off what he, he's going to say, the tone, his body English. He's going like crazy, body language. Okay, and he's got one leg longer than the other. So he must be limping a lot when those bees are chasing him. And this tank, it's not what you think. This tank is bubblegum pink, okay? And it's vibrating, and it sounds like a big, giant Christmas toy as it rolls along. And this cannon on it is made of clear plastic. So that you can see the shells coming out. And the shells coming out come flying around and bang into the back of your green monster track, the dragster on the drag strip. And in behind here is a crowd of people looking for this other gold dumbbell because one of them is missing and it's 14 karat gold. And when the driver gets up to this line, he's got incredible vision. And when he looks down, at this, this big uh, finish line sign, it isn't just a brain, it's a brain in a bottle, and the brain is pulsing, okay? And it's the brain from young Frankenstein. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. And stuck into this, into this sign is part of this, I think it's an oak tree, but it's, it's kind of an odd oak tree in that it's really, really black in color, and there's nothing on it whatsoever except this apple and the apple is orange colored it's got a big hole in it and the worm sticking out with his tongue okay and also there's this parachute and it looks like there's cobwebs all over it and this poor creature hanging off this parachute is a skeleton so it's probably been there for a really long time and this claw hammer amazing claw hammer it's the hammer it's a copy of the hammer that Michelangelo used to pull the nails out of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel when he began to do work there. But the hammer also banged this fingernail, okay? And that fingernail is pulsing like crazy, okay? It's red and it's, it's just sore as can be. And it, you or me, we're driving down this crazy road and this road has got boulders and rocks and all kinds of stuff and on one side is a sheer wall and on the other side is the cliff so you got to be very careful as you drive along this bumpy road and then when you look at the fork one of the forks goes up into the sunshine and it looks like it's going to be clear sailing from there on out and the other fork i've got this oar and it looks like it came from a viking ship because it's got a chain still hooked on it okay like they use to chain the guys to to row the boat okay and that that paddle was also swinging away at this bee, okay? And the bee is sticking in the butt of, believe it or not, my Aunt Corona. My Aunt Corona, who was always a real pain to me, okay, was running down this road, up and down this road, and when it came to the end, there was a cul-de-sac, and I could see my Aunt Corona gonna be running around in a circle around this clock at the end of the cul-de-sac, and I'm sure she's gonna trip on this baton, and the baton, by the way, is directly from Bolt, the 2012 Olympics, where he broke the record. Okay, that's his baton. Okay. If I were Dr. Seuss, and instead of egg frames, we were talking about green eggs and ham, You would conjure up this idea, try it, try it, from the Dr. Seuss Green Eggs and Ham story. 
But what's wonderful here is you're familiar with mind maps, piece of cake. You're familiar with words, piece of cake. Now you're familiar with the flow of ideas and how by making them ridiculous and stupid and scary and smelly and itchy and whatever it is you want to do to them, in your mind, all of a sudden, they light up. They light up. They're there. You don't have to worry about the words. You don't have to even think about the words. You become the farmer. And when you get up in front of a group of people, you become you, you become interesting, you become unafraid. Isn't that what you want? It's all here, it's all done. You have a few assignments. Number one, turn off the TV Turn off the TV, turn off your computer, <laughs> and write down the flow of ideas. See how much you can remember, because they're my ideas, but I have already emblazoned the trail of how do you create the flow of ideas. Then I want you to pick out the presentation you're going to make, if you're going to have to introduce somebody at a wedding, if you're going to have to go to a meeting at work, if you, whatever it is, you can even figure out your elevator pitch. You can use all this and, and share it. Share it with all of us that are beginning to understand that A-frames are the way to go when it comes to preparing to make a presentation. Please follow me. There's going to be so much more on so many different topics, but just follow me. It's that easy. Thank you very much.